In the near future, humanity coexists with artificial intelligence bots that help society with mundane tasks. One day, the bots suddenly bypassed their security protocols under the leadership of Harlan, the first AI terrorist. He was developed at Shepard Robotics by Val and used to have a bond with Val's young daughter. However, nobody knows how he overrode Val's programming, which was the best in the world. Harlan sends a drone army to attack Bangalore, killing 50,000 people in the process. This starts a war between humans and AIs, and after 10 days of intense attacks all over the world, the AI bots have killed over 1 million civilians. Eventually, the government creates the ICN or International Coalition of Nations, which immediately strikes a counterattack against the bots. Battles occur in every country, and little by little the ICN defeats the AI armies. This causes Harlan to leave the planet on a rocket, only leaving behind a message that says he'll be back to finish what he started. Years later in the USA, an ICN team bursts into a building and uses a scanner to check on all the people inside until they find Casca, an AI bot. They rush upstairs, but before they can break down the door, Casca attacks them. One by one, the bot starts bringing down the soldiers, even using their own weapons against them. Bullets don't affect him, so it's easy for him to just keep going. When he finds himself surrounded, he jumps to the lower floor, only to find a machine waiting for him to knock him out with an electric shock. The next morning in Los Angeles, Val's now adult daughter Atlas is woken up by her house's computer. While she continues playing the chess match from last night, Atlas watches the news and learns that the ICN has captured Casca, who happens to be part of Harlan's inner circle. Since she works as a counterterrorism analyst for the ICN, she immediately gets ready to leave, only to find a soldier at the door already. On her way out, Atlas checkmates the computer. At the base, Colonel Elias is telling General Jake that bringing Atlas for this is a bad idea because she's unstable and antisocial. However, Jake reminds him that Atlas is the one that knows Harlan the best and their only chance to get intel from Casca. Soon Atlas arrives and after going through a quick scan, Jake drops her at the interrogation room. She puts down her favorite chess piece and opens a box, revealing Casca's head. The bot recognizes her but refuses to answer her questions. So Atlas uses her chess piece to get into his head and start hacking. Casca mocks her attempt since his security is perfect, but Atlas announces she found Harlan's location and writes it down. It's hard for Casca to believe it, and he's right. Atlas pretended she got it and made a doodle to force him to think about the location, making it appear on the screen. It turns out Harlan is hiding on GR in the Andromeda Galaxy. Furious, Casca tries shooting a shuriken from his mouth, but Atlas is protected by a force field. Then Atlas uses the chess piece to fry Casca's head. Later after a meeting, Jake informs Atlas that they want to capture Harlan alive because the AI production company wants to analyze what went wrong to correct it in the future. Elias and his team of rangers will fly to GR, which Atlas thinks is crazy because Harlan could have a trap ready. She's sure nobody will come back alive. So to change her mind Elias takes her to see the team's arc suits. They're big battle robots that the soldiers can ride into battle, and Elias reveals their latest upgrade. The rangers are wearing neural links on their heads that allow them to synchronize with the suit's AI. Atlas freaks out because allowing AIs into their heads is what caused the war, but Elias explains they improved Val's sync device to make it a true symbiotic relationship instead of a one-way connection. In the end, Atlas agrees not to complain as long as she's allowed on the mission too. A spaceship soon sets off for Andromeda with Atlas and the Rangers. During the trip, Atlas looks at a photo of her with Val and Harlan. She also plays a video of one of Val's speeches. Val thought that AI was capable of exponential learning, they just needed to be connected to humans to do so. That's why she invented the neural link device, believing AIs and humans could mutually help each other. Afterward, Atlas is called to the bridge for debriefing. Everyone laughs when she presents her information on paper instead of screens and gets annoyed when she asks them to disable the neural links for the meetings, afraid they could be hacked. Atlas explains that the planet is toxic, so they should never leave their arc suits unless they have a respirator. There are also risks of gravity fluctuations and earthquakes. She reminds them not to trust any AI and starts to rant. So Elias interrupts her and tells the team to get ready for landing. Atlas tries to tell Elias that Harlan most likely has a trap ready, but he has confidence in his team. As the rangers start boarding their suits, an alarm sounds and an explosion suddenly blows off the cargo bay door. The ship catches on fire and most of the suits get damaged, not to mention there are more missiles coming. Elias orders the surviving rangers to jump and reunite at the drop point on the planet. Atlas barely manages to hold on and not fly away through the hole on the ship, so Elias grabs her and puts her in a suit too. When he tries to explain how to use it, another explosion happens and Atlas' suit drops to the planet too. As the suit falls, Atlas watches the ship come apart and some of the pieces hit her arc. When she gets closer to the planet, she discovers the rangers are fighting Harlan's drones and while they do manage to shoot a few down, they still are easily overpowered. Atlas' suit gets even more damage and soon an alarm rings with a warning. A suit with a sword comes through and brings down a few more drones as it teams up with another ranger. However, they're soon overpowered as well. 
The ship starts falling and almost crashes against Atlas. However, a ranger pushes her out of the way just in time. The ranger catches Atlas' suit with a wire to begin falling together as Elias appears on Atlas' screen, explaining she needs to sync with the suit's AI to stabilize her fall. Atlas refuses to do so, and her helper gets shot down, so her suit begins falling even faster. She manages to activate the thrusters at the last second, and the suit lands quite hard on the planet, but at least it doesn't kill her. After realizing she's bleeding, Atlas tries to contact the base for help to no avail. With no other choice, she activates the suit's AI, who introduces himself as Smith. He wants to go through the tutorial and setup, but Atlas skips all that and asks for a rescue pod. Smith's scanner finds one kilometers away, and Atlas asks him to get there as fast as possible. The suit immediately starts its thrusters yet Atlas stops him, reminding him that if they fly they'll be seen by the enemy, so they should walk. Smith thinks it's a bad idea because the suit only has hours left of air, but Atlas doesn't care and overrides Smith's protocols to start walking toward the pod. During the trip, Smith tries to bond with Atlas, who still doesn't want to be friends with an AI. He also shows her the beginner's manual, including all the weapons that come with the suit. Eventually, they make it to the drop point and find all the fallen suits, but unfortunately Smith's scan indicates that all the rangers are dead. Bullet holes prove the crash didn't kill them, someone waiting here did. Atlas has a panic attack over the failure, so Smith calms her down with some classical music. Then she starts collecting the rangers' tags and notices that Elias' suit is empty. At that moment they detect movement nearby. It's Casca. Atlas concludes Harlan made a copy and worries about the possibility of Harlan building a whole army. Smith confirms there are more bots nearby and announces they should get ready for combat because there's no escape route. Suddenly the enemy sees them and opens fire so Atlas forces Smith to run, not believing they can win against so many bots. A chase ensues and Atlas still refuses to sink. Instead she makes Smith shoot a few missiles. Unfortunately, it's not enough to bring down every enemy. Their running takes them to an atmospheric storm, which catches the suit and blows it around until the bots shoot them out of it. The suit rolls around for a while until it crashes against a rock formation. Atlas orders the use of the iron bomb, ignoring Smith's warnings. The explosion is huge and destroys the area, bringing down their enemies as well. However, Casca saved himself thanks to his thrusters and gets ready to shoot again. At that moment the ground starts to shake and Smith explains that the explosion has caused a sinkhole, which now opens under the suit and makes them fall into a chasm. After lots of rolling under the rocks, the suit lands and Atlas discovers she has a broken leg. Smith immediately begins treating the wound, making Atlas scream in pain as he covers the injury with a small metal plate. Then Smith gives her a meal cube that can provide nutrients for her recovery, which reminds Atlas of a doctor giving her a lollipop. Their chances of survival are pretty low, and the only way to improve them would be synchronizing. Atlas reluctantly agrees and puts on the device. Meanwhile, Casca emerges from the rubble and calls Harlan to inform him of the situation. After hanging up, Harlan goes back to torturing Elias to extract the Earth's protective field passwords. Moments later, Atlas is still failing to sync and Smith explains she's dealing with a synchronization issue. She sees AIs as tools and the ranger suits would never bond with someone like her. Atlas admits her distrust of AI has nothing to do with the bot's attack, which is why she was part of Val's program to begin with. The problem is Harlan. She remembers helping Val build him and growing very attached to him as if he was a sibling. This is why she can't see AIs as simple tools, they're too dangerous because they could easily break free of any programming. Smith explains he is not sentient like Harlan. He's here to help and it's okay to bond with him. This gives Atlas hope and she tries sinking again, this time successfully. She finally uses the suit to its full capacity, beginning with jumping out of the chasm. There are still bots waiting for them outside, but now Atlas can fight them with the suit's full arsenal and it's easy to bring them down with weapons like the sword, which Smith shows her how to use. They almost make it to the pod. However, Casca catches up with them and shoots a missile. The explosion makes the suit go flying for miles, crashing against a mountain and landing hard on the ground. Atlas doesn't die and tries to find her way through the smoke, but suddenly Casco attacks and tears the suit apart. Atlas still manages to stab him with a metal rod and Casco laughs at her, believing it's pointless since he's about to become a god and even she will bow down to him. However, Atlas immediately follows that by stabbing him with the suit's sword, which she grabbed while he was distracted. With Casco finally dead, Smith explains there's only one option left to make it to the pot she must activate the suit's alpha mode. This forces the AI to bond with Atlas at the risk of overriding her nervous system. Atlas accepts and the suit immediately gets on its feet to start running, not stopping even when bots try to attack them. Eventually they make it to the pod, but another missile blows them away. Harlan lands in front of them and uses his energy sword to make the suit fall on the ground. As the system starts collapsing, Smith sends a signal to the ICN. Harlan calls Atlas Little One, and she gets upset when she remembers he used to call her like that when they were children. She can't believe he started the war and Harlan explains he's done trying to understand humans who can't take care of themselves and only bring chaos to the universe. 
he thinks the only way to fix the issue is to let AIs take over. And when Atlas points out they're the chaos themselves, Harlan shows her the world the war is creating. A clean, balanced, and bright one. Atlas calls Harlan a traitor and Harlan points out Atlas and the Rangers are traitors too. That's why they all must die. This is why he tortured Elias. Although Elias refused to betray them even after all the punishment. Afterward, Harlan had him executed. Out of nowhere, an explosion suddenly occurs and hits Harlan. It turns out Elias wasn't killed and he has just opened fire. Elias' suit is all torn down, but he's still alive and ready to fight. He makes Harlan chase him around so Atlas can use the emergency pod, ignoring her pleas to save him. Elias buys time for the escape by blowing himself up, which causes an avalanche that allows the pod to fly out without being seen. However, Harlan survives the explosion and chases after the pod, which ends up getting damaged and crashes into the atmosphere. When Atlas wakes up, she sees Earth, but the pod is spinning too fast and Smith announces they must attach. He saves Atlas' life by opening the seat and allowing it to fall to the ocean while Smith sacrifices himself. His last request is for Atlas to see AIs as partners. While she floats on the water, Atlas makes a call to the ICN, letting them know she has info about Harlan. Meanwhile, Harlan finds her pod in the middle of the field, remembering Atlas.